This Liz, has been a dream. This these is- these cards were blank. I was reading off of the computer the whole time. Liz, you've been amazing. High five, Liz. I feel like I'm like on between two ferns or like. Uh, <laughs> Am I back? But you are in between two, two ferns. ferns. Oh my God, Liz, that was amazing. That was a wrap. <laughs> that series regular. That's Liz Cohen. The most interesting person that I know. A celebrity who is not black. Stop saying Liz Cully is black. She's not black. Stop that. You guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, we need to take a photo. God, it's a cut. Three, two, one. Here we go. Welcome to Series Regular. I'm Quay Tan. In each episode of the show, we sit down with a different working actor and discover the irregular ways they broke into the business. Our next guest is a quitter. She quit acting and somehow still ended up at the 95th Oscars. She is the host and creator of Cool, Cool, Cool. She is the queen of Condé Nast. She is an entertainment executive. She is a socialite. She is a Soho House card carrying member. Her friends call her the Brentwood mom. Put your hands together for the brilliant bisexual beauty, Liz Collins. Please, please, please introduce me not only to myself every morning when I wake up, but anything I ever do. That was brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> I am a quit- quinner. I am a quinner. Wow. Love it. Yes. I'm dead. That was amazing. Is the show over? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. This is our first time meeting in person. I know, which is so weird. It feels like it isn't the first time. Well, I feel like I know you because I've been listening to Cool, Cool, Cool. And what I love about your show is that you really, in this really simple, very matter of fact way, you really let us into your life, <laughs> into your childhood, um, into where you are now. And we get to meet all these amazing, cool Hollywood people that you know. And I just think you're just. I think you're cool. Thanks. I feel, you know, cool, cool, cool started because I feel like I've lived so many lives and there are so many people that I think are really cool that aren't necessarily social media influencers or big celebrity. Like, I don't think being famous is what qualifies somebody as being cool. It can. And I know lots of famous people, but I also know all these different people that are athletes or mathematician, just different cool people that I wanted to bring to light because I think that's what's so interesting about the medium of podcasting is that we have the ability now to meet so many different people, Mm -hmm. you know, that we wouldn't before. But also you were on my previous show, so we kind of have met before. Over Zoom, but that's not the same thing. It's not. This is totally different. I'm meeting you on your previous show that you did with Darren Karp. Mm -hmm. Um, Scissoring isn't a thing. (laughs) Why I named that that show is, you know, beyond my comprehension. Great, great name in theory, bad in practice. Thank you, Meta, for all the, like, shadow banned. Because you were shadow banned, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, we, I'm still shadow banned, but yeah. yes. Yeah, anything that's, like, sexual adjacent. I guess scissoring is sexual, but it's, Yeah, because it's a thing. Because it is, it's a thing. Um, but we met. On that show, my publicist at the time, she got me to go on on there, which I was really excited to like do press and stuff like that. And I was just, you got me at my acting drama, just full, unhinged. I was crying. I was sobbing. I loved it. But you were so open and it was great. I, you know, that's it, it wasn't unhinged. It was open. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you are unhinged, the door would be open because you're off. <laughs> you're off the hinges. Off but the hinges. Yes. Um, okay, so every episode of series regular starts with the same question: What is the irregular way you broke into the business? I guess in your case, it'll be the entertainment business. And we got to talk about Hollywood's unhinged and delusional fat phobia that made you quit the acting business. Mm. 
So you want to, so, oh, wow. So many. Okay. Into the acting business or into entertainment business? Oh, I know. It's so hard. Okay. Cause so it's a little, I mean, I, the, I started acting as like a really small child. So mm-hmm. I feel like I've always sort of been into it. And that is a simple answer. I would make, I would mimic my parents' friends at yeah. dinner parties or like outings, or if I would go to work with one of my parents, I would walk around. Cause I was one of those kids that I was bullied pretty badly. So I always had a tummy ache. I was always sick. Mm-hmm. So it started me nipping the nurses and getting them to really like me to get me to go home. And then I would go to an office and then I would kind of like mimic people's accents. Mm. <laughs> Cause there was a lot of like People from all over the world, from Russia. Your father's from, New Zealand. My, yeah, my he's Kiwi. His, his oh yeah, all the time. Heaps and heaps, you know, all the things, weird shit that they say. Um, but yeah, so that's how I got into acting as a kid. I just loved it. And then the entertainment industry, I mean, girl, how long we got? That's well, a long one. We're going to get into Sarni. We're going to get oh. into Aziz Ansari. We're going to get into- <laughs> Oh, she did all types of research on me today. Oh we'll, boy. Okay. <laughs> we'll get into that. But no, I am I am interested in it. Um, but I guess, why did you quit? Why did I quit? Yeah. Your um, dream, which was your dream. It was my dream. Yeah. Well, it was, too, it was a lot of things happening all at once. So I came down to Los Angeles really- for a few reasons. I had been singing with my band, which was called Liz and the Lifted. For quite some time. And my bassist dipped. Like, uh, couldn't he had some family stuff going on and he left. And that was really tough. We kept trying to replace him and we were recording and I just, it was money. I mean, I was working three, four jobs at a time. I couldn't afford recording space. The gigs, when you do gigs and you're splitting them up between keyboardist, drummer, guitar, bass, that's like goodbye. That's what 25 bucks, you know, you're making peanuts to an elephant And um, we were trying to record. He left. I was like, you know what? I've been doing really well with this acting thing, commercial thing. Let me go down to LA. And I was doing okay. I mean, I was a very small little tadpole in a very big ocean here. Whereas in San Francisco, I was a big fish in a small pond and I was booking a lot. Mm -hmm. And I came- Commercially. Commercially. Tons of- Well, I did actually book a film called- Mm -hmm. Which is a pretty big film. But they cut me. I was- I know. I was Robin Wright Penn's um, younger version of herself, which, by the way, back in, if you look at pictures of me and her from like Princess Diaries, we actually do quite look similar. And then they cut me last minute, which sucks because speaking of everything going on in this, with strikes, like it was, I was going to get my SAG car. It was really a bummer. Wait, 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 wait. But you filmed. Well, sort of. I mean, I went to set and then it just like, they kept revising the script, revising the script. So you don't get your SAG card then actually. So you didn't step on, you didn't step in front of camera? Never, not once. I was there two full days. And then they're like, hey, have a nice life. And I was like, no. Um, How old were you at the time? I was 24. But baby, that's huge, mama. Yeah, no, well, I mean, for all of, for the tale to be told, but it was never seen. I mean, it was just, so you know what I mean? It was like all these little things started to like happen. I came to LA. I started to work with Leslie Kahn, who you might be familiar with. Do you work with Leslie? You did work? Well, I know, whatever. It's a whole nother thing. And actually maybe we'll play into why I quit. I was working with, I mean, <laughs> whatever. Because. Yeah, listen, well, here, hear me out. Hear me out. And I'd love to get your take on this. I come down here, I'm broke as shit. I have no car. I'm living literally in a closet. Like not even, I'm not even fronting like, oh, I was like not out of the closet. I was in a fucking person's closet. Can I swear on this show? Yeah. Oh, (laughs) I was in a closet working all these jobs, going to Leslie Kahn, then paying to like audition in front of casting directors because you have to do these like workshops. So I'm doing these workshops. I actually met a few casting directors that really liked me. I auditioned for Brooklyn Nine-Nine, like three or four times. Um, I had, oh, I 
I put myself to tape for a pilot. It was that, it was huge. It had like a, a Ray Donovan, Ray Donovan. I mean, it was like going. And then every time they're like, you just have to lose more weight. And it's so crazy because I think- Who told you that? Oh my God, my manager at the time, the casting directors would give notes back. Mm -hmm. um, like she's great, she's so pretty, but she's not quite pretty enough. Like we need her to be a little bit more feminine. Or we really like her voice, but it's like too tomboy or she's too, I just wasn't, or she's got this like fat ass, which is cool for JLo and like a sexy girl, but she's not sexy enough. And it was just constantly comments about my body. And I just, die. I mean, I got so thin and I just, between the money of trying to audition and get, you know, you have to get new headshots, you have to do this. Da, 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 and then working to the bone, it just, I kind of, I took a break and then the break, I'm still on the break. Mm. I'm still on the break 10 to 11 years later from acting. <laughs> May I ask? Yes. <clears throat> before you lost the weight. Yeah. What size were you? Oh my God, four, six. I looked like I do now, four, mm. six. And that was too, that was too big. Correct. Yeah. Is it because... You are a white woman with yes. blonde hair, blue eyes. Green. Hazel, oh, green. green. Oh, Sorry. look deep. I'm colorblind. Look deep in those eyes. Uh, they want you to be real thin because that's the, that's the box. Yeah, I think white women, I mean, listen, I think all women are told they need to be something so that they can be what the male gaze wants them to be right. And then also I think women also, particularly white women, put a lot of pressure on each other to be thin. I think mm -hmm. being a thin waif, blonde, blue eyed, whatever white woman is what they expect white women to look like. So. Yeah. I know you said you're still in your acting break, but you're going to the Oscars. Oh, <laughs> you well, know, that's for work. <laughs> you know, you know, you know all of these. I died. I died going to the Oscars, and, and I you, went alone, basically. Yeah, it was a trip. You know all of these like famous people. I feel like it wouldn't take much work for you to be like, give me on a, give me a walk on role, give me a this, give me a that. If we're thinking about middle school Liz and she's I writing know. in her diary, my, all my life's woes will be solved if I'm an actor. You definitely listened to my Dear Diary episode. Yeah, I mean, I would love to do it. I think the other thing that was a bummer is that the, the role, it was always, you know, I was lucky that I had done a lot of theater. I did a lot of community theater. I was a part of ACT in San Francisco. I acted a lot. When I got here, it would be like a one-liner, which I would take <laughs> if it was the right thing. Yeah, I guess I've just, I don't ask for a lot of favors. Maybe I should. Um, I just interviewed my friend, Emmy, who has a short film out called The Complicated Order. It was just in, um, uh, it was just in a couple Outfest. of- Outfest. but then, yeah, I don't know if you and saw it. And it was that it. actor, <clears throat> she's a famous actor. Yeah, she's in- Cult films that, that yeah. Yes, Heather. Yep. Um, and it's so funny because I watched it and I knew all these people in this party scene. And I was like, girl, hello. What about me? She's like, you, you wouldn't have fit in it. And it's true. Cause I looked at the crowd and I didn't work. And so I did say, Quay, I did say on my show, I said, well, if you have another, you know, film, short film, and you think I could be in something, I'd love to. You gotta be bold, honey. I know. You're you gotta right. You gotta be bold. I know. I know, it's true. Oh! I mean, I asked to be on your show, so clearly yes, I'm Yes, but I'm we flexing. have to do with the acting, because what we know you do this. We know that this is what you do when this is your bailiwick, but let us see the acting. Okay. Things have changed. Things have White changed. White women can do a lot now. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> they need to be doing a lot more, in my opinion, but yes. Um, okay, so I said in your intro that you are the queen of Condé Nast. For the uninitiated. Anna, not me. <laughs> Let me do my lead in. Okay, go ahead. For the uninitiated, Condé Nast is a global mass media company. They own a few magazines that you may have heard of. Vanity Fair, GQ, Vogue. You work for the company that owns Vogue? 
You tell Anna Wintour to jump and she says, how high? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even close. Oh my God, not even close. Hi, series regular. If you're enjoying the show and you want to hear and see more, go to patreon.com backslash series regular to unlock full length episodes. Beauty, this is where I keep all of the tea, all the stuff that my guest would kill me if I made public. So go over to patreon.com backslash series regular for more. Now back to the show. You've been at the company for two and a half years. Mm-hmm. Your title is Executive Director Entertainment and FYC Sales. What do you do there exactly? And what, is the, what does that title mean? Whew. Well, it means I uh, I get a lot of emails. Um, just kidding. I feel like my whole life is funneling emails. No, I. what a dream for me, by the way. I just have to say, um, especially since this is recorded. But um, <laughs> what a dream for me. No, I grew up. I mean, I don't know about you, but I grew up plastering my walls with magazine. I mean, a lot of it was like Essence and Ebony and like <laughs> XXL because I, I love R&B and, and hip hop music, but a lot of it was Vanity Fair. I mean, for me, and especially, and I'll get into my role, but I'm so lucky and I really mean this sincerely to work with the writers and the talent that is at from, especially from an editorial perspective, I love my business team, but what I do for work is basically all the studios, Disney, Universal, Netflix, et cetera. I am their point person for advertisements. So whether that's on site, social, custom content in the magazine events, I um, work with a team of people to come up with ideas and then we sell that. So they're my clients. Do you do the Vanity Fair Oscars after party? I do not do that because what's interesting about that is that it doesn't make sense for a studio to financially sponsor that party because editorial, it's really a celebration of all the films and all of the television. Mm -hmm. Well, it's typically for Oscar party, it's just the films, but we'll call it award season. Mm -hmm. That's really to celebrate everyone. So it would be a little strange if an entertainment partner were to buy it, Mm -hmm. but I am involved in that party adjacently because I run FYC, which is, What that stands for is for your consideration. Mm -hmm. So that's all, that's Golden Globes, Emmys, Oscars, the Grammys. It's a, it's awards advertising. So Mm -hmm. if you live in New York or Los Angeles, you might see a taxi top or perhaps a really big billboard and it'll say outstanding, um, or like what, you know, five nominations and da, 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 da. That's, um, the whole line of business that I, uh, oversee. (laughs) Okay. So. Yeah. Um, so take me back to, to, to the event. So if you don't do the, or if you're not, if you're not leading the Vanity Fair Oscar after party, what are some of the events that you, did you lead that event, that Netflix queer most event that was in WeHo where Julia Fox was at and you met Mal? Uh, and oh my God, where I met Mal. No, I didn't have, I was a guest of that event. I had <laughs> That's where the social, <laughs> socialite came in. <laughs> No, I was a guest there. Events that I'll do. So for instance, Vanity Fair partnered with Apple TV Plus to celebrate um, when we invited voters from a few of the guilds because to vote in, I'm really getting into like the nerdy nitty gritty of my life, but to vote for the Emmys or to vote for the Oscars, you have to be a part of a particular, either you have to have been nominated or you have you had to have won or you have to be a part of the nominating body. And so we invite voters to these events to basically sway them to vote for each. Oh, you're lobbying. Yeah, babe. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. You're a Hollywood I'm not, lobbyist. I'm not, I'm not. No, no, I'm not a Hollywood lobbyist. <laughs> I'm not. But like other people, other studios are. And Vanity Fair is a wonderful place to come and dream up ideas to get votes. Hi, Series Regular. Did you know that we have Series Regular merch? Go to Quaytan.com for official Series Regular merch. That's Q-U-E-I-T-A-N-N.com. Now, back to the show. Okay, so you were, like you said, you were doing those commercials in San Fran. Mm-hmm. You decide, you call it the bag on San Fran. Um, you come out to L.A., and you are able to get into these cat. First of all, how did you get your agent? 
the oh agent boy. that was getting you into the Showtime in front of the Showtime casting directors. Well, and okay. So sorry to cut you off. So it wasn't. It was actually a manager. Her name is Martha Sanchez. She's wonderful. She actually never signed me. Mm-hmm. I think because I didn't book it. <laughs> but she would send me stuff because she was cool. She was repping my friend Jessica Clark at the time. Jessica Clark, I just had her on my show. She was cur- at that time. She was in a show called and the she- Redhead. Nah, she was Lilith, which is the person oh, who had blood all over her body or whatever. And she just starred in um, Burn Usher's video. Mm. <laughs> Let it burn. Such a good one. And um, I was wanting her to represent me. And she was like, eh, I don't know. But here's an agent. And it was an agent at Paradigm who actually, and you know, it's so funny. I can't even remember this fucking lady's name. She was my agent. And she had, her claim to fame was discovering Anna Kendrick. Which I mean, I guess that is kind of a claim to fame because that lady's probably pretty rich. But yeah, a couple of us will do it for you, huh? So, wait. And they were all like, you're fat. Martha actually never but told me you, I was fat. But you were signed to Paradigm? Oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, you did callbacks, screen tests, producer sessions, and you booked a pilot. Yeah. That seems like it didn't go to air. Nope, didn't even go but, anywhere. It went nothing air. It went to nowhere. But though. you booked a pilot. Did you film it? No. You didn't, oh, you didn't film the pilot. Mm-mm. Okay. You it was, uh, was, came out and that kind of put the kibosh on that. Oh, it was going to be a similar. It was very, very similar. Okay. It was like incredibly similar. It was John Wells who well, did. Oh, who else was attached to it? Other actors? Um, you know? What's her name? Jessica Shozer, Sojar. Okay. I don't know. I didn't watch any of those like CW shows, but CW people. I get the, okay, help me understand because it's not like, oh, I've never booked a pilot yet. I've yet to book a pilot. You've been on, Mm -hmm. that's a huge, that's fucking Ryan Murphy, dude. Playing a lesbian. Boo! I knew it was going to happen eventually. (laughs) Eventually. Um, um, Got too much attention to detail for these dudes. Got to (laughs) come on over to our side. Okay. So... You, you're, you know, I'm with a boutique agent. Okay. I, it's just him. Um, you booked- Did they want to sign me? <laughs> uh, oh, he will. I'm just- signed you in a second. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, but you could clearly, you could be, we'll turn around. You'll be with CAA tomorrow. No, no. Listen, I'm telling you my like story of my life is I get so, so far and maybe I, it just doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't go over the line. We're going to go. Okay. I feel like you're talking about nailed it. I mean, I mean getting, getting nailed. nailed. But we're well, gonna, that we're, too. We're, I mean, my God. Or even honestly, scissoring isn't a thing. We were technically rep by WME and it's just like no one wanted to pick it up. That show didn't work for a variety of reasons. I'm so happy that we did it. That's how I met you. Everything was cool. I wanted to do something very different, but we had, we were rep by WM. I mean, Darren has been with WME for a long time. And so the podcasting unit brought us in and they couldn't sell it. They couldn't get us deals. I've always just fucking done it myself. Yeah. Cause I'm like all these, the only person, sorry, that I have found that has really ever done anything that I could not do was my lawyer. Mm. Shout out Jessica Marlowe. Come on, lawyer. She's a badass. We need a lawyer. Entertainment lawyer? Yeah. Okay, we need a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Uh, can we get an, an example or hypothetical of one thing your lawyer was able to do? Sure. I had an idea for a show. It wasn't getting... Well, actually, I mean, even getting nailed. Fuck. I mean, that was a show that I had. I started it at MySpace. Yes, that's a whole nother episode. Um, and I had, it was I just, told you we're getting into Sarni, so it's not oh another boy, episode. Oh boy, God, Sarni, the most famous, unfamous person on the planet. And, um, we, I created the show called Getting Nailed. It was way before its time. I sold it to a couple of different, um, production companies, but, or rather didn't sell it to them, but went into deal, like co-selling deals. 
And then in one of those co-selling deals, we were looking at a network and I, she just really taught me about IP, which Mm -hmm. I think is very relevant given the conversation right now with the WGA and SAG, especially when it comes to your likeness, IP, your brain and how valuable actors and storytellers are for a variety of reasons. And she was like, girl, you cannot get rid of the IP. You cannot do that. You cannot sell your IP. You came up with this on your own. You have to own it. You have to continue to remain, to have ownership. And I'm so glad. I mean, the show died. It never happened. But I'm glad I learned that because Mm -hmm. another deal, I almost signed a fucked up deal, a fucked up deal with another platform. And Mm. I didn't. And thank God. I would have made like zero. I mean, really not a lot. I'm talking like two G's. Yeah, we're going to have to definitely talk because I need <laughs> like, and I know you were like, oh, a thing and I brought up your age and everything, but like it's out there publicly. Um, but no. <laughs> My age is out there publicly? Uh, 911. <laughs> um, no, but like I feel definitely because I really want to like, l- like learn a lot from you because I feel like you could teach me like a lot, particularly now that I'm stepping into your space. Um, okay, let's okay. let's get into Neldic since you were talking about the IP. So mm-hmm. Nelda is a show, oh, but we okay, we'll we'll come back around to Sarni and we will. Sarni. Why? Uh, Don't get Jesus <laughs> Christ. I gotta text her and be like, oh my God, Sarni, Jesus Christ. Anyway, continue. So um you create this at MySpace, mm-hmm. this show. And like you said, you were trying to set it's and it's basically a uh, Nelda is a show where you are, um, cause you need a, you need a, like, like hot ones. You're interviewing people and you're eating this hot sauce, but instead of eating hot sauce, you're getting your nails done yes. and you're interviewing folks. Yeah. Well, I mean, I came up with that show. So I was working at MySpace as a producer and a writer back when Justin Timberlake got involved in this kind of ad company called Specific Media bought it. It was sort of like the last and final era. Mm -hmm. And I was producing content um, behind the scenes. I had a show that I produced like 100 episodes of called uh, Five Minutes to Stage, which was amazing. I got to work with pretty much every musician possible. It was amazing. But Mm -hmm. I wanted to be in front of the camera. I'm like, I'm funny. I'm great. Beautiful. Thank you. But I was like, what the fuck, you know? And so- me being me, I'm like, well, I'm going to create an opportunity because I think with the acting, I was like, listen, there aren't that many white girls from the Bay that like are waspy, but also down <laughs> and have been through some shit and are queer <laughs> and are whatever, you know what I mean? And I was like, the best character I could play would be myself. So mm-hmm. how do I create an opportunity where I can oh. do what I want but be myself. And it all really started, I interviewed Ludacris, which was one of my first celebrity interviews. And he was there with his now wife, I believe. And they're like, you are like something else. Like, what is your deal? I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm from the Bay, whoop de whoop da 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 And he's like, dude, you need a show. Like, you're nuts. Like, this is great. So I was like, oh, thank you, Ludacris. Uh, thank you, Luda. Hmm. Uh, so, and his story is incredible. I ended up doing a uh, oral history on his very first record, It took like five and a half months to do. I interviewed literally everyone from Atlanta that he had ever originally worked with. Ludacris is somebody, let me tell you, that because I intimately know his origin story, Mm -hmm. that dude, his work ethic is bananas. He is... There is a reason why he's in Fast and Furious 42 and all that other shit. So anyway, so I came up with the show. It was a little before its time. And, um, I compared it to hot ones. It predates hot ones by a millennium, <laughs> like hell years, like yeah. a million years, yeah. but it was, it, there was some logistics that were difficult. It takes a long time to get your nails done. A lot of celebrities want to get their nails done. There's also s- sound. It was a whole thing, yeah. but it was super fun and it was super cute. Um, and I had to pitch it to my bosses and everyone. And I had to go into the editorial room and I was like, please give me the money to make a pilot. Mm-hmm. And I did. Um, and it ended up being great. And a lot of people tried to copy me and yeah. Let's get into that. So you were talking, <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about maintaining IP. Yeah. And I know that you tried to sell this, sell getting nailed uh, uh, so many times and it ended up not working. Um, there was, or it ended up, the deal keep fa- kept falling through and kept falling through and kept getting shelved. But you had an opportunity where you could have had Amber Rose yep. be the host. At Revolt. Yeah. At Revolt, which mm-hmm. is, a, that's a platform. 
Oh my God. That's where Carisha By the way, is. Uh, y'all go have fun Google. I'm sh- surprised you didn't watch me hosting Revolt TV where I fucking just ate shit. It was uh, not my best time. <laughs> That's owned by Diddy or? Oh yeah. Diddy yeah. was there when I wow. was on air with that kind of corny dude, whatever his name is, DJ something or other. Okay. So. Handsome, but corny. Yeah. But if Amber Rose would have hosted, you would have had to have just been in the background. Yeah. You off camera. Yeah. And why did you decide not to do that? You know, I I think simple answer is ego. Okay. I think the more complicated, because I'm complicated answer, I, I'm like, how do I say this? Because you're apparently going to remember everything I say for the rest of my life on here. <laughs> I had interacted with Amber a few times. And I think she's fine. I really like what she stands for. I think, you know, I have worked with her since this deal. Um, I think she's a wonderful mother. I think she's stunning. I think she's great. I the, Some of the men in her life do not deserve her. I, um, God damn it, Amber. She's so fine. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I just didn't feel like sh- the whole, I felt like getting nailed was so joyous. Mm. And it was silly and it was fun. And it was also, I was very protective of the nail artists. I really wanted them to have a platform as well. And I just had this spidey sense that all of, again, my ego, what I thought was the quote special sauce, not to be compared with hot wings, but what I thought was so special about it would be stripped away and it would become this like very different show Mm. given her background given revolt, et cetera. So I was like, I'll fucking die with this thing. Okay. And you talked about, so you made that decision and listen, it's your baby. Yeah. And you get to decide what you want to do with your baby. Um, And I totally respect that. And I think whatever decision. Because it wasn't going to be a lot of coin. Yeah. I should also say that. It's not like fucking, you know, whatever studio came to me and was like, yo, this is going to be high five figures or Mm -hmm. even six figures. We're talking like uh, go to Vegas and dick off and have dinner at Carbone kind of vibes. Once. Yeah. And I was like, nah, not a reoccurring. No coin. Okay. So you were talking about maintaining IP not wanting to give up your your project and your baby. Mm-hmm. And because you didn't, it was then no colonized. No one knows who I am. No, no, oh. it was colonized. <laughs> no, I never had a career. The um, white the white woman was colonized. So what Finally, happened, <laughs> if it has to be me, I'll take it. Fuck it. No, no, no but this is serious. So, yep. so, so many people copied you. Uh, so many people copied Joseph me. Patel, who won an Academy Award for Summer of Soul, uh, uh, you worked with him years prior at The Fader. <laughs> and- no, 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 no. Well, he was my boss at MySpace and he's the one that greenlit Getting Nailed and he went to The Fader. And he went to The Fader and he your, called your, you. Your AI didn't work on the story. So no, it's either. me. It's not AI. It's me. It's, you can tell this was mistakes because I'm a human. Okay, so. And he called me and he was like, hey, we're doing this video. We're going to go get our nails done with Saweetie, which kind of double hurt because she's from the Bay. Oh. And I was like, damn, Joseph. And then I can't rem- I don't know if it ended up happening or not. But oh. that was, and listen, Joseph and I are very cool. I know what episode you listen to. Joseph and I are very cool. I respect Joseph. Joseph gave me one of my first major jobs. Joseph, if you're listening, I love you. Call me. Um, I definitely, it hurt my feelings though. Hi, Series Regular. Did you know that we have Series Regular merch? Go to Quaytan.com for official Series Regular merch. That's Q-U-E-I-T-A-N-N.com. Now, back to the show. Um, okay, so Sarni is your friend of 12 years. Yes. Um, and she plucked you out of a bar. Sure did. Um, so what happened from my understanding is that you quit acting. Yeah. You were, you had a job in advertisement and you were let go. Oh yeah. Um, and you were broke working at a bar and you were also doing social media for Casamigos. Oh my God. Yes. Dude, it was so wild. I got this job. It was so random. A friend of mine from the Bay was like, hey, this kid has this ad agency, which is ridiculous. 
Um, they need someone to set up all the social media accounts. They're working with these two alcohol brands, Caliche Rum and this tequila brand that's about to come out with George Clooney. And I was like, oh, that sounds tight. <laughs> and I set up all their social media accounts and I did all wow. of the kind of content capture. I mean, it was so rudimentary back then, but yeah, that's true. That is correct. So you're working, and this is what I really need you to teach me and teach the listeners, please. Okay. So <laughs> so you're working at this bar, you're mm -hmm. bartending. Mm. Sarni walks in with Aziz Ansari. Yep. And uh, who's on a really, really popular show at the time, a show that you auditioned for. That it was nine nine. No, that casting director also. Yeah, he did the same. Ca yeah, what was it called? Where they all went to the school? Look at me. This is why I failed as an actor. Yes. So. Um, yep. Community. So Aziz comes in with Sarni, and everyone is buzzing around Aziz, and they're acting weird around him. Mm -hmm. But you knowing. Todd Anthony Shaw and all of these I was like, who the fuck is Todd people? Anthony Shaw? I died. I was like, who is that? <laughs> you know Todd, all of these yeah. famous rappers, so you're unfazed by Aziz Ansari. I didn't know who he was. That's what it was. You didn't know who he was. And so you start cracking jokes. Yeah. And just being who you are, which is so dynamic, I have to say. Like, being here in person with you, it's really Am a I moment. Am I better in person? Wee! It's, yeah. It's a moment. So because you're cracking all these jokes, you just make instant friends with both of them. I did. How, like, so how? How, how, do, how do you do this? I was in a bad mood, if I recall. I really did not like that job. I worked at the Evely, which was like a hot spot up on Sunset. And it was just like, it was such a grind. My boss was total, constantly verbally assaulting me. He's a piece of shit. He's still kind of looming in Los Angeles. Say his first and last name to camera. Dave Kupinski. Fuck Dave you. Dave Kupinski, we're coming for you. I know where you work too, allegedly. baby. Allegedly. I know, I know, allegedly. I know where you work too. So if you're listening, actually, this is really funny. Can I make an aside? I was driving in Echo Park like a month ago and I thought he was in the car next to me and I rolled down the window <sighs> and I'm in my like really intense flicking off like rage era. And I was like, I will fuck you up. Like crazy, crazy on Glendale and sunset. Like fuck you motherfucker. Want to get out the car? Like crazy. I was probably PMSing and he rolls like he kind of turns his head and I realize that it's not him. <laughs> You're terrorizing the Armenians in Glendale. No, I'm not. He wasn't Armenian. Oh, it was okay. like a different guy. No, we were in Echo Park. It was like a random guy. Oh. And he looked so fucking shook. And my wife called me and I was like, oh my God, I just went so hard in the paint on this poor, like older white man in this car next to me. I thought it was Dave Kupinski, you know, the guy that was disgusting towards me. And uh, it wasn't, and I felt really bad. And then I was like, oh, and didn't know what to do. And so I made a right and then another right and then another right. Comedian. Anyway, so I was working there. I didn't love it. I think I was probably just in like a snarky mood and Sarni was actually telling Aziz a very funny story about this guy that she was dating at the time. And I was kind of listening and yeah, I don't know. I didn't know who they were. This There's that really popular show. I'm going to sound so stupid. I didn't have a TV for a long time. Julie, her name is Julie. She's a white lady and she was on a huge show. And the show was called, that's what it is. And she came over to Aziz and to Sarni. I'm like, oh, they must be famous because I knew who she was. Gotcha. And so then Sarni was like, respectfully, why do you work here? You seem quite smart and funny and blah, blah, blah. And I, I was still acting at the time. I was like, oh, like I hate to admit this, but I'm like sort of acting and I'm writing. And at the time I really was like working on uh, a short film that I had wanted to do. And then she's like, I know this sounds crazy, but I work in MySpace. Would you ever consider working there? And I was like, no. Wait, 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 wait. You tell her you're an actress and a writer mm -hmm. and she, and this is at the bar and she goes, this is crazy. I work at MySpace. Do you Maybe want a job? she didn't say that. Maybe she was like, I work somewhere and we're hiring. What's your email? This was a long time ago. Really? And I was like, yeah, here's my email. And then I was like, yeah, I'll send you my resume. And then yeah. I sent her my resume and then like immediately they called me. And then I went to go see Joseph Patel. I went to go see Joseph Patel and I was like, oh my God, you worked at Vice. I used to do some stories there. Do you know this other guy who I won't say his name, but who's lovely, but I just, there's no reason because apparently 
made. This is going to live for the rest of eternity. Mm -hmm. I said, do you know this guy? He and I grew up together in the Bay. And he's like, I'm from the Bay. I was like, right, but do you know Homeboy? He's like, I do know Homeboy. I was like, (laughs) okay. And then he called my friend that I grew up with. And he's like, hey, can you vouch for Liz? And then he did. And then I got the job. And I worked and I was the first one there, last one to leave. First one there, last one to leave. I was the last person laid off. I I went from, I did every job at MySpace in the three years that I was there. I never said no. I worked my fucking ass off. Yeah, you did. I really was. I really, I have, it was a dream come true. And I worked my, I literally, I don't even know how I did it. Yeah. I like look back on that. I'm tired all the time. Like this is going to take me out. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I got to drive 45 minutes back to, oh no, honey, I'm going to take a nap in the car. Hi, series regular. If you're enjoying the show and you want to hear and see more, go to patreon.com backslash series regular to unlock full length episodes. Cutie, this is where I keep all of the tea, all the stuff that my guest would kill me if I made public. So go over to patreon.com backslash series regular for more. Now back to the show. That's what I'm going to tell you about. Don't look, don't look, don't look. Stop it. Get off of LinkedIn. Girl, you're lucky I love you. I was like, uh, no, I'm not I starting to panic. I'm no. like, are we? No, 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 no. In- We're going to take a look down memory lane. So. Oh my God! <laughs> Wait, do you just? You did this? Come back! Oh, oh my God! I shot this right here. This is in the thing over here. <laughs> sit down. Oh, I sit recording. Yes. Oh. Don't look at my butt. Okay. Look at you, Robin He's Wright. He's famous, I think now. You can't stop love. <laughs> Was I good? I thought I killed you. Nope, we're a bulletproof vest. I thought that was just a fashion statement. She wasn't. She's gonna take a picture of you and then put it on Instagram and then kill you. What? Oh. Did you know how hard it is? Look how skinny I was! (laughs) If I see one more picture of a perfect latte or an amazing dinner, I'm gonna scream. Everything has a filter, everyone's with cool people. I'm just taking control. I'm writing a digital story, and you swear for the next chapter. So you run! <gasps> oh shit! <laughs> oh, I shot shit. that. I shot that right here, less than a block away in the <sighs> villa, whatever the shit is, right here next to the grove. And you know what? Okay, so these boys, these brothers. We had the same agent in San Francisco and we, I used to, okay, I, we used to do all these commercials together in San Francisco and then we would, audi- like, we would see each other as an auditions and I ganked a Google audition from him. They were going for a guy and I walked in and fucking charmed the whole, all the casting directors and I got it and I was in the back of a cab for wow. like, in New York for like years, like this Google tablet thing. Anyway, they moved down here. They're like weird Christian people. And they left the industry and they have hella kids and they do some other shit. But they could, they were so big on YouTube in the beginning. That guy, Sawyer, I think is like a very famous YouTuber. Wow. Oh, wait, Sawyer. That does sound familiar, Sawyer right? Sawyer Hartman. Go look it up. How <clears> the <throat> fuck did you even find that? I've never seen that. It's not AI. It's me, Was baby. I good? Was I good? You were so good. You were so good Look that I need face. you. I my need face. you. First of all, you're the first person to get up. I was like, is she walking off? Uh, <laughs> you're the first person. I to- thought it was done. I didn't know what was I happening. I told you we were still, we're still in it. I just had to, I just had to knock you off your, your feet for a little bit. Oh my God, so, don't show my butt in these shorts. I died. We'll cut to the other camera. Thank so, you. um, wow. So I'm, I'm airplaying now. Um, Joseph. So I, I'm um, shook. I'm shook. so you, 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 you did that. You're working. You, you were working as an actor. You, you got money ball. Yeah, I know you got cut. I know the pilot wasn't, it wasn't shot, yes. but you're signed with paradigm. You're going out to all, all this stuff. And, and you're at the 95th Bad. Oscars, you know, Kevin Hart and Usher, I need you. Yes. Will you please, can I, can we, can we, can we strike a deal? I, I'm we I have to hear it first because you who are you who have you're coming out with all types of shit during this interview. So let me hear it first. 
can you, as a favor to me, hmm. as a favor to the series regulars, can you please give acting a shot? Oh, you're sweet. I would. I just, yeah, I will. Fine. Or you have something I can be in? I, of course. I'll be, a, I'll be a store clerk. Of course. A, a mean store. Or give me like a road rage. <clears throat> I'm so good at road rage, mm -hmm. a road rage scene. Uh, closing questions oh my is. God. That I was so scared. <clears throat> what I thought what was happening is because we were talking about this studio and I thought like maybe you had something to do with that <laughs> video. That was a whole emotional journey. This whole hour and a half has, or two hours has been a huge, I have never been on a show for two hours in my life. <laughs> this has gone by so quickly and yet it is so, I feel like I'm down in like another universe. <laughs> it, th I don't even know what to think at this point. Um, why did you say yes to this interview? Because it's you. I also didn't say yes. I asked to be on the show. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 You're like, who should I have on my show? I was like, me? I don't know. You're like actors only. And then I was like, wait, but you are an actor. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay. But what do you mean? Because it's me. What does that mean? Because I love you. Because we met. I thought you were so on Zoom. I know, but you were so wonderful on my show. I've obviously, since we've followed each other, I feel yeah. like I watch your life. Uh, I don't know. I just, I loved you when we met and I knew if you were going to be doing something, it would be really interesting. I had no idea how thorough. <laughs> um, okay. Was there, and I asked this to everyone, was there any question that I asked you that you hated? Yeah, <laughs> I, I did. Um, is that like, is this going to stay in the podcast? Yes, it is. Please. Uh, what question? It wasn't that I hated it. I mean, it's more like, ooh, are we really talking about that? I think it's like works. I always am very caught. I think when you um, basically gave me a job interview, I didn't hate it, but I was like, oh, was wow. It, was it the out? Was it you've only been here for a year? Yeah, I didn't love that. Okay, I can cut that. And then what else? Oh, you're like actually asking me to cut things. Oh, don't, you don't have to cut that. That's why I'm asking you, is this staying oh. in the podcast? Okay, you then, I'll, then, I'll, then I won't cut it. The only thing I do want you to cut if what? we're asking yeah. if this is going to be cut, cut where you were like, cut okay, that. I'll cut that one. Okay, so, it's and then when you last question, the martini, um, oh. when you look at that, not, not my logo, but uh, when you look at- <laughs> When you look at that, we are so chaotic. Like I, have, I'm like when I look at what when I'm you like, looked at that. It's video. a very nice logo. It's very shut, pretty. Shut up. We only have a minute. Okay. When you look at that, when you looked at that video of you acting, yeah, and you look at where you are today. Oh my god. Well, I know exactly where. Has I, it turned out the way you thought it would? No. No. Fuck no. If you, I didn't know, no. I was running to go bartender, running to go waitress right after. Literally, that's why I was wearing all black. Mm. Yeah. So no, I had no idea. And not in a bad way or in a good way. I yeah. just would never have thought that this is what it would be. Yeah. I really think I thought I was gonna be a writer or a producer, or like in, in entertainment. Well. It's not over yet. It ain't baby. over till it's over. So I want to see the acting. We, okay. we shook on it. And we I shook please, on it. I want to see the, the, the writing and the producing. Uh, Liz Cully, please let the people know where they can find you. Oh, my God. In a in a dark cave in Griffith Park. I'm just kidding. Um, you can find me at Listen to Liz. Um, if you want to find out about my podcast, it's at Cool 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 on Instagram and Cool 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 everywhere you listen to podcasts. Except Spotify kind of buries it, so you got to look Liz Cully. Cool Cool Cool. Liz. Thank you. I, this Liz, has been a dream. This these is, these cards were blank. I was reading off the computer the whole time. Liz, you've been amazing. High five. Liz! I feel like I'm like on between two ferns or like. <laughs> Am I back? But you are in between two, two ferns. Oh my God, Liz, that was amazing. That was a wrap. That series regular. That's Liz Cully. The most interesting person that I know. <laughs> a celebrity who is not black. Stop. Hi, 
my series regular. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Series Regular. Series Regular is created by me, Quay Tan. It is a one-stop shop. I do the research, the producing, the interview itself, and the editing, which is so, so difficult. But I love it, and it is so rewarding. If you love this show and you want to see more of this show, join our community on patreon.com backslash series regular to keep us going and to keep us strong so I can bring more conversations with working actors and other people in our industry. Thank you so much. My name is Quay Tan and I will be seeing you on the regular series regular.